Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody, this is Professor Y. K. Gupta from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi, Professor of Pharmacology. Today we will be talking about how drugs act. Now, if there is a drug, it goes into the body and when it goes into the body, then it produces some effect. Now, say for example, if you give adrenaline, what you see the effect is increase in heart rate what you see is increase in blood pressure. If you give for example, if you give salbutamol which many of you may be knowing used for bronchial asthma, then this causes bronchodilatation. Now, what you see is, uh, is the effect here, this increase in the heart rate, increase in the blood pressure, increase uh, in the dilatation of the bronchial smooth muscle. What you see is an effect, but how this is produced that means if you are giving adrenaline, it is causing a stimulation of cyclic AMP and this cyclic AMP is causing increase in heart rate. This salbutamol is stimulating beta 2 receptor and this beta 2 receptor is increasing cyclic AMP and this is causing bronchodilatation. What I mean to say? there is an intracellular mechanism, there is a something which happens inside the inside the body or inside the cell and that is the what is called as action. So, what is you see what you do not see is the action which happens either at the enzyme level or which can happen at the receptor level. And what happens ultimately, so this is called as the first messenger or second messenger system and what you see is an effect is the what you see. So, you must be clear about what is the difference between the, the effect and the action. Now, if I say how the drug causes the effect. So, now the drug will act a drug will act on receptor and this will cause drug receptor complex and this drug receptor complex will start molecular event or action and then this will result into an effect. If this is clear to you, now a molecule would be there and a receptor is there 
this molecule or the drug receptor will make a complex this is called as drug receptor complex. Now, this drug receptor complex is able to generate some action, but this action is not sufficient to produce an effect. So, you do not get an effect that means, the drug is insufficient concentration to show you the effect. Now, if you increase the molecule more and there are two more receptors are involved and then you have this drug receptor complex and this two drug receptor complex will cause some effect which you can observe. This is called as the sensitivity. So, what is the sensitivity is the lowest concentration of the drug which when combines with the receptors will produce an observable effect. Now, if you increase the molecule to more then these will the effect will be more and then you get more effect that if you just see that is called as the sensitivity means the lowest concentration of the drug which produces observable effect. If this is a guinea pig ileum or if this is any response the lowest effect is the lowest concentration which produces an observable effect. Now, if you increase the concentration that will increase number of receptors are occupied you get higher response. If you increase the concentration further you get higher response. If you increase the concentration further you get higher response and if you increase the concentration further you get further high response. This means that this is called as a dose response curve. So, what do you mean by dose response curve? It means there is a concentration of the drug which does not elicit any response. The minimum concentration of the drug which elicit response is called as a sensitivity. The concentration of the drug which will produce the maximum response that is called as the maximum response and if you further increase the dose then you may find that the concentration may not increase because at this stage all the receptors which are there are now occupied and no further receptor can be stimulated therefore the drug will not produce further increase in the response. If you increase the drug further then you may find that the concentration increased, but the response has reduced. If you further increase the response is reduced and this is a surprising. This is called as the paradoxically this is often called as supra maximal, supra maximal. Supra maximal does not mean that it is a maximum and an over maximum there is nothing like a supra maximal. This is lesser than the maximum and the reason here is the receptors which are there they are so much occupied already and once these receptors are occupied for long duration this is they get desensitized. And that is the application you many times do in therapeutics. So, what you see if I convert this into a graph which is a log dose which is a dose and this is the this is the dose and this is the response. So, what you see here that as you increase the dose this is 1 microgram this is 5 2 microgram this is 4 microgram 
this is 8 microgram, this is 16 microgram. If you increase the concentration of the drug, the response increases. If you increase the concentration of the drug, response increases. But if you increase the concentration, it becomes flat. And then if you increase the concentration, it will decrease. So, now you can see three important things here. One is here you see that the drug is acting in a dose response manner and this is called as a plateau and this is called as a desensitization or supra maximal response. Now, this is the response versus dose. So, this is called as a hyperbola curve. Now, in practice when you increase the dose and this dose is not increased in a such time such ratio if this is 1 and now you want to increase the dose to maybe 10,000 times of the first dose or maybe more. In that case what you do is you convert this law this dose into logarithmic scale. So, you have a 1 means 1 and when you have a 2 means it is 100. So, log 2 and then log 3 log 4. So, now in instead of this what we plot a dose response curve where this is a log 1, this is a log 2, this is a log 3, this is a log 4, this is a log 5 and which means this is a 1 microgram if I say so, this is a 10 microgram, this is 100 microgram, this is 1000 microgram and this is so on and this is the response. That is means you have adjusted large number of dose range or large dose range and where the response is usually will not change thousand times and that is the advantage. So, this is called as log dose and response curve. So, what is log dose response curve is when you convert a highly variable dose and into a logarithmic scale versus the response which does not change so high and the advantage is that you can accommodate in a graph a huge one variable whereas, the other variable has not that high. For example, if you have a tissue which is causing a response of contraction of the ileum or a tissue like bronchial smooth muscle which causes contraction because of histamine you increase the dose and see the what is the effect up to 10,000 multiples and then the graph would be in this it will be like this which is. Now, this is the graph which is called as sigmoid graph. Now, you see the sigmoid graph has a typical three character one here, one here and one here. This is the graph where you see that at this stage the effect is almost no. That means, this does not produce the response. This is the place where you have seen a response that is called as the sensitivity of the tissue. Now, from here it from this place to this place what you see as almost linear part of the graph and this linear part of the graph that means, the way you increase the concentration in the same proportion the response is increasing and this part is therefore, used for all type of comparison. Now, the third part is this is A, this is B and third part is again 
is a, a not a linear this indicates that at this stage the receptor are getting saturated and at this place this is getting desensitized. So, sigmoid graph is advantageous because this can accommodate large variation in the dose. This can give indication of the sensitivity of the system or the tissue and there and then it can give you a linear phase and it can give you a long non linear phase. Now, the third possibility is, is when you convert this graph into a log dose that means, from 1 log 2 log log 1 log 2 log 3 log 4 log 5 and log 6 and the response is also highly variable. It can also vary maybe from 1 person to 10,000 person and in that case you convert this also into the log response. So, this type of graph is called as a log dose versus log response. Now, when you convert this log dose and log response graph, then the graph you which you will get is a straight line. Advantage of the log dose and log response graph is that you can shrink the huge variation in the dose and you can also shrink huge variation in the response and you get a straight line. The disadvantage here it does not give the, the linearity part or the, it does not indicate where the sensitivity is beginning and when the desensitization takes place. Therefore, in biology and this is primarily used for epidemiological studies. In biological studies where the response has a limitation for example, if you give adrenaline the heart rate will the blood pressure or heart rate may increase may be from 70 to 120 or 180, but it cannot increase say 1000 and 2000. So, there is there is therefore, the response is uh, limited though the drug range is very highly variable and therefore, in the biological cases most of the time what is used is the log dose response curve. Now, where and how this log dose response curve is useful. So, now you understand if you increase the concentration of the drug then the drug starts acting in a dose dependent manner and then it acts. Now, so the concept is the drug will act on the receptor will form the drug receptor complex and this drug receptor drug receptor complex will initiate the action and this action will produce an effect which will be dose dependent. Now, if I say a drug binds to a receptor binds to a receptor and makes drug receptor complex, but it does not produce any action it does not produce any effect. It means you are occupying a chair, but you are not active you are just a dead person you are not passing any instruction you are not doing anything this is called as an occupying chair what many times many inefficient people do this is called as affinity. So, what is affinity? Affinity is the ability of drug molecule to bind to a receptor to occupy a chair and that is affinity. Now, there may be two type of person one is the person who has an affinity means occupies a chair 
and does not produce any action. This is called as no intrinsic activity, intrinsic activity. So, what is intrinsic activity is ability to produce an action which may result into effect. There may be another person who occupies that means has high affinity, but has a also full act affinity intrinsic activity. Now, this is a very dynamic a dynamic prime minister versus a non dynamic. So, now this is a intrinsic activity is full and this is called as with intrinsic activity full. Now, if you just say a drug which has an intrinsic affinity drug which has an affinity maximum affinity and has no intrinsic activity therefore, no effect no effect this is called as this is called as antagonist means it is not producing any effect. On the other hand if you have a drug which has an which has affinity full affinity if I say full affinity that is 100 percent affinity or you can say affinity is 1. But when it binds to receptor and it does not and it produces the effect that means it has an intrinsic activity of 100 percent or intrinsic activity of 1. So, this is called as agonist. Now, this is called as a full agonist. If it is a full agonist, then so this 100 percent affinity and 100 percent intrinsic activity, this is called as an agonist and this will be called as a full agonist. So, how many of you would like to be full agonist? I hope that all of you would like to have full agonist. But there are in medicine antagonists are also very useful when agonists are superactive. I will give you an example. So now, if this drug is is a drug has an full affinity, affinity is full, affinity is hundred percent. That means they can occupy chair, but intrinsic activity intrinsic activity is not full it is less than 100 percent or less than 1 that means their output will be less than the full agonist and therefore they are called as a partial partial agonist they are agonist but they are less than 1 so, they are called as a partial agonist. So, what are partial agonists? They have a, an agonistic activity that means they have a intrinsic activity and they have an they have an affinity and they have an intrinsic activity which is less than 1. So, this is a partial agonist. Why this is important? Now, you see in treatment or therapy. Now, if you just see how the graph would be if you have a drug which has a a dose response curve. There are two drugs drug A and drug B. I want to see that whether drug A and drug B which has better efficacy. So, now I will plot a dose response curve and if I put as a log dose versus response curve of A it will come like this a sigmoid. That means, to produce this much response the dose required is maybe this log 1, this is log 2, log 3, log 4, log 5. 
uh, to produce this response you are requiring this to produce this response you are requiring higher dose and to produce maximum response you are requiring this this is drug a now if you have a drug b and you plot the same dose response curve you get a response like this can you see the difference the difference is this is also sigmoid curve this is a shift shifted towards right side and the shift is parallel and the maximum here is same now if you just see that to produce the same response the same response now you are reducing the you are requiring higher amount of drug you are requiring higher amount of drug for reaching the maximum which was you are getting with the lesser dose so this is drug b it means that three characters one is the maximum can be achieved by both the shift is towards right and the shift is parallel so if there is a parallel shift it indicates that the two drugs are acting on the same receptor if the maximum can be achieved that means the drug have the same efficacy so same efficacy but the drug b is requiring high dose or you can say the drug a requires lesser dose how much lesser dose if you compare this is say log 3 versus this is log 2 that means the difference is log 1 that means the drug a is 10 times more efficacious than drug b or drug b is 10 times less efficacious than drug a the drug a is more efficacious so this is also used to see which is more efficacious drug and this is always we want to have a more efficacious drug in most of the situation so this log dose response curve is also used to compare the two different type of drugs now the another situation would be if you are taking a drug a which is an agonist and in combination you give a drug b which is an antagonist and if you are taking an antagonist then you plot the graph and this is the log dose log dose versus response and if you plot a dose response curve of the agonist this is like this now this is a now if you put b in the same bath suppose this is an organ and this is the tissue now i a is this response now in this you put again an antagonist b also now what will happen b is antagonist that means many of these receptors are occupied by the drug which does not have an intrinsic activity say this is the 10 molecules or 5 molecules now instead of these 5 molecules two has been occupied by antagonist because they also have affinity but these three molecules are occupied by agonist which have an affinity so what you will get a response which is lesser then if all they have been occupied by agonist that means you will now require high concentration of agonist if you increase the concentration of agonist more then this will be replaced and this will sit here 
message is that to get the same response in presence of antagonist you will require higher dose. So, now you require higher dose and again you increase the dose and you get. So, this is A plus B, A is agonist, B is antagonist. Three important findings, one is when you give a drug agonist it will produce a log dose response curve when you give an antagonist in presence of agonist you will require high dose of agonist to produce the same response and the maximum is achieved and the maximum that means the effect of antagonist can be surmounted can be overcome by giving high dose of agonist and therefore this is called as this is called as antagonist but this is called as a surmountable antagonism and this is also called as a competitive antagonism that means competitive antagonism means the drug will act as an antagonist but if you increase the concentration of agonist the antagonism can be overcome and vice versa that depends on which molecules are more and that is the importance of when you treat poisoning when you give say morphine poisoning atropine poisoning cholinergic poisoning in that case you go on giving antagonist which will overcome this so this is called as an competitive antagonist so what is competitive antagonist when the dose response curve of agonist in presence of antagonist shift towards right the shift is parallel and the maximum can still be achieved and that is called as a partial as a full agonist now the another situation is you have an agonist which is a full agonist means affinity as well as intrinsic activity 1 versus you have an agonist which is a which has intrinsic activity plus the, the f which has an affinity plus has an intrinsic activity less than 1. That means, you have a strong person in your team plus you have also weak person in team and if you are having a tug of war here, here there are 5 strong people and here you have a 3 strong people and 2 weak people. So, what will happen if you are only so initially if there are only 2 if there are only 2 and there are only 2 now here this is so if you add one more here so what you will get a, an addition more if you had 4 then you have got more but now if you have a fifth one so you get initially a dose response curve like this this is full agonist but now in this a now you add an a small a means this is A and this another one is A plus A versus A plus A which is better naturally this will have a less response. So, what you get initially if you increase then you get a potentiation you get a, a, a lower dose to work on that and as you increase you get a, a a change. So, now if you just put it again here you you get a dose response curve with only A and if you increase the concentration. So, now for this dose now you are getting this response and you increase A plus A 2 that means you are getting the same dose more response and then 
but what you do is you at at a later day time you get lesser response here. So, what does it mean? It means that the partial agonist at initial phase act as as an synergy or as a summative or as what you can call as an agonist, but at a later higher concentration this act as an antagonist. So, partial therefore, partial agonist is also called as partial antagonist. Now, in treatment where the partial antagonists are useful because when you want to give a controlled mechanism of action. In that case, you do not want to have a very high action, you want to have a controlled mechanism. So, you give partial agonist, so that action is not very high and action is not very low. So, now to summarize this, I will give you a few examples. If you have a agonist, full agonist like acetylcholine, which acts on muscarinic receptor. So, when it acts on muscarinic receptors, it may act on different type of muscarinic receptor 1, M 2, M 1, M 3 whatever. A acting like histamine acts on receptor, it acts may be acting on the histamine H 1 receptor and H 2 receptor. Now, if the acetylcholine acts maximum so, it means the intrinsic activity is 1. So, that is the acetylcholine. If intrinsic activity is slightly low, that means the example is carbacol. Histamine is highest activity, therefore, it is not used clinically. Now, if there is a if there is a poisoning by acetylcholine which happens in organophosphate poisoning, there is excessive flooding of acetylcholine. If there is a poisoning or by histamine, there is severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis, what you have to do? You have to give the antagonist. So, that what type of antagonist? You have to give competitive antagonist that will replace these drugs and what would be the dose of competitive antagonist that means you go on giving the dose till the entire agonist is replaced from the receptors and that is how the antagonists will be useful and now if i say the the other drugs now if you say muscarinic receptors they will be useful the weak muscarinic receptors will be useful for different purposes and if you want to have a stronger histamine, you give stronger histamine. If you want to have an H2 blocker, then you give H2 receptor antagonist. So, to summarize, the drugs act on the three mechanism. Either it will act on the receptors or it will act on the second messenger system or it will act on the enzymes. When it acts on the receptors, follows the linear kinetics that means it will increase the effect as the drug concentration goes up but after certain limit there will be maximum because the receptor will gets desensitized some receptors are always remain silent they are called always sometimes they are called as a silent receptor or sometimes they are called spare receptors and then it gets saturated in parkinsonism if you say if you remember or if, if you understand we give parkinsonism treatment levodopa and after 7 8 days time and in some patient after 20 days the receptor gets desensitized and then the patient loses response that is because the desensitization here you allow the receptors to regenerate 
by giving the receptors rest that means you give drug holiday and that is how the receptor will regenerate and so you have understood now the what is uh, the agonist what is antagonist what is partial agonist how a dose response curve indicates what is the log dose response curve indicates what is the log dose versus log response indicates and how by this simple mechanism we can identify that which is more efficacious drug and which is less efficacious drug we can compare two agonists we can compare two antagonists for treatment purpose thank you very much we will talk next time with some more examples